All right, we're back here continuing with the uh, identity hearing testimony. I wanted to go back to this Jenks Act thing and look at this sua sponte. Uh, um, this sua sponte meant on their own accord or on your own accord or basically without being told to do so. So with respect to the Jenks, which is a disclosure of like the notes and uh, anything that the witness uses uh, to help them with their recollection during testimony, um, all of that stuff under the Jenks Act uh, verbatim, uh, if the defense requests it, that it has to go to the defense. And, and down here, if the court denies such a motion by a defendant, this is a reversible error. That means that uh, it's grounds for a mistrial or dismissal and uh, although the court need not order the disclosure, so order the Jenks disclosure on their own accord. So basically, this is saying that if the court denies a motion by a defendant, then you can get a mistrial or dismiss the criminal charges, but the court does not have to do this on their own accord. You've got to ask them, which seems kind of stupid. If this is what you're entitled to, you should just get it. But the system is full of little places to get tripped up like this. Um, and, you know, if you didn't know anything about Jenks, uh, then, then you would never have requested it. And maybe, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe they're not able to provide it, which would be a case for a mistrial. So this is this is just interesting the way legalese is written and uh, and there's going to be a lot of these kind of little loophole tripwire things uh, in the language as we go through this. So continuing on after the discussion that was held off the record, uh, Deborah says, the judge, it appears that there is no form utilized by this court for the inquiry of the sort that the parties contemplate. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine like sitting around uh, the dinner table and hearing somebody talk like that? It's, this is just, uh, this is garbage to most people's consciousness. So uh, what she's saying here by there is no form utilized by this court for the inquiry of the sort that the parties contemplate. So basically the parties, you know, you got your prosecution and your defense, contemplate is thinking about, um, and the inquiry that they have notified the court that they're thinking about is for Heather Ann Tucci to represent herself, to be her own attorney. And so, this is interesting that Deborah, the judge, is saying it appears that there's no form, like there's no prior shape or structure that is utilized by this court for the inquiry of the sort that the parties contemplate, for what they're here to figure out today, like what's their purpose of being here? And their purpose of being there is twofold. First, uh, this hearing is to determine Heather's identity. And secondly, it's to make a ruling on whether or not Heather is competent to stand as her own attorney, to represent her own legal interests. So, I'm, I'm uncertain, like, the court deals with both of these. They deal with identity hearings and they deal with people representing themselves. They deal with both of those issues all the time. There is form to handle each one of those issues by itself. So when Deborah says it appears there is no form utilized by this court for the inquiry of the sort that the parties contemplate, what she's really saying is, uh, I don't know how to handle both of these things at the same time. Uh, and this is kind of funny. Um, We will take a very brief recess while the court determines the full extent of what must be memorialized in order to determine that Miss Tucci's 
waiver, Miss Tucci Giraffe's waiver of her right to counsel is knowing and voluntary and satisfies the constitutional requirements. So Deborah says she doesn't know how to handle the identity and and having somebody service their own lawyer at the same time. She's going to take a break to figure out uh, all the things that the court must do, all the, the full extent that must be memorialized, remembered, documented, written down. She wants to make sure her I's are dotted and her T's are crossed and she's taking a brief recess for that is what she's telling the court. And the reason she's taking a recess is to make sure that uh, Miss Tucci's giraffe of waiving her right to counsel is knowing involuntary waiver and satisfies constitutional requirements. So the defense attorney says, that's fine, Your Honor. I have just one scheduling issue. Would it be possible? I have a 1030 status before Judge Moss that should take no more than five minutes just to set a new date. So perhaps if we can re reconvene and say half an hour, that would at least allow me not to hold back from Judge Moss on a relatively short matter. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bose. Ms. Walters, do you have any other commitments this morning? Other than the 11 o'clock before her honor here? No, Your Honor. Very well, thank you very much. We will resume no later than 30 minutes from now. Mr. Bose, if you believe your matter will be completed, your matter before Judge Moss will be completed prior to that, please return, please, and reach out to Ms. Walters. Your Honor, I'll go right up there now. I'll go up there right now. If we can get called more quickly, I'll get back sooner. Very well, and perhaps the deputy clerk can assist by making a call to her counterpart upstairs. That's fine, Your Honor. Very well, thank you. In the meantime, Miss Tucci Giraffe, please return with the marshal. And a recess is taken. So after they come back from this recess, the deputy clerk says, okay, recalling criminal case Year 2017, 531M, United States versus Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Judge Deborah, thank you. Is there anything further, Mr. Bose, before the court proceeds? No, Your Honor. Ms. Walters? No, Your Honor. Very well. The court during the recess had an opportunity to review Ferretta v. California, 422 U.S. 806 and McCaskey v. Wiggins, 465 U.S. 168. Having done so, we will proceed with a determination with respect to the extent to which Ms. Tucci Giraffe's waiver of counsel as described by you, Mr. Bose, is knowing and voluntary. As a preliminary matter, I will ask whether you wish to be heard, Mr. Bose, or you, Ms. Walters, concerning whether you, Ms. Walters, may wish to excuse yourself during any portion of this inquiry if it is the case, Mr. Bose, that you have a concern that privileged information may inadvertently be elicited. I do not, Your Honor. You do not have such a request? You do not? You do not? We do not believe that privileged information will be revealed at this point. I don't have a request for the government to step outside. Can we agree then that if it appears that it is likely to occur, you will somehow alert us and you, Ms. Walters, will then excuse yourself? Yes, Your Honor. Can we agree on that protocol? Certainly, Your Honor. Very well. Now, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, I will ask you and Mr. Bose to come to the podium, please. Now, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, I will ask you to please face the deputy clerk of the court to be sworn, and then we'll proceed. And then on line two, page 11, just in parentheses, it says defendant sworn. And then the very first thing, the very first line out of the defendant's mouth says, withstanding identification correction of being the source of all that is, I swear to state the truth. Now, when we look up here on Taron Cognito's uh, webpage and his blog, sorry, terrencognito.blogspot.com, uh, we see that Sunday, August 13th, today, uh, there's a transcript of a call from Heather who recounts her Washington, D.C. swearing-in ceremony missing from the transcript. So, this phone call 
was transcribed by Denise from a recorded telephone conversation with Taryn and Heather. So I would love to hear that, uh, that telephone conversation. I know that Taryn has put up uh, other conversations between himself and Heather on YouTube. Uh, I looked on his YouTube channel. I don't see it. Um, I would really love to hear, hear Heather's words on this from herself. Um, what Taryn has done based on this conversation that he had with Heather is to take the uh, transcripts of the identity hearing that we've been reading through and he added this in to correct the, the record according to what Heather told him during the phone call. So you can see that there's an awful lot that is claimed to be missing here. And I don't, to, I, to encapsulate the words defendant sworn in parentheses and, and have that represent all of these, all of these words here. Uh, that is, uh, that's highly, that's highly irregular. I, uh, <laughs> We, we've got we've got some we've got some issues here, and, and what we're going to need to do um, is Barbara Devico, the court reporter. Uh, she uses a recorded audio to make sure that her transcripts are accurate. And yeah, she's got a special machine she types on that's a court reporter machine, and it's basically. Uh, got buttons that represent phonetics and then she can go back through uh, all of this stuff uh, and compare it to the recorded word through the uh, all the microphones and stuff that are in the courtroom and make sure that everything's right and for uh, for a court reporter to put defendant sworn in parentheses uh, and and to not have uh, the words of the deputy clerk, which which she starts off uh, right here. She's quoting the deputy clerk. But then to, it's the deputy clerk that's going to swear her in according to the judge here. And yet she doesn't, she doesn't put down what the deputy clerk said to Heather. Like, he could have asked her anything and we wouldn't know it's just supposed to be encapsulated under defendant sworn and where our mind takes us is to all the Hollywood and television movies where we've seen people being sworn in and and all the behavioral programming uh, around that and and so all these images pop inside our heads that okay so she was sworn in when Really, Heather is claiming that this went on. So I'm going to read this. So now, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, I will ask you, please face the deputy clerk of court to be sworn, and then we'll proceed. Deputy clerk, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Heather Ann Tucci says, by due sworn declaration, pause. Can I have a second? And Deborah, the judge, says, sure. Heather Antucci, she must take a second and say okay. And the court says okay, that's it. Heather Antucci Giraffe, no, may I proceed? And the judge says, we still see you did it. And then Heather Ann says, no, no, standing due identification correction. I am source of all that is, original, nunct pro tunct, praetera, praetera and I do swear to speak only true, accurate, and complete. Withstanding identification correction of being the source of all that is, I swear to state the truth. Thank you. Now let's go back to here. Thank you. So there's already a discrepancy here. We can prove that stuff, well, 
we know stuff was cut out. We know the court reporter omitted at least the deputy clerk his words or her words swearing in Heather. So why is there anything that is said in that courtroom have been redacted? unless it was explicitly stricken from the record by the judge. So right here we've got a problem. Seriously. So let's continue. Thank you. Now good morning. You have heard Mr. Bose's representations regarding your, correct, your request. I will hear directly from you at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. To be able to answer any questions that you may have, I just wanted to confirm because I have no ability to confirm whether this, the notice of filing, I just wanted to confirm with your honor that it is on the record that Mr. Bose has made. It is. Okay, I may proceed. Please ask your questions. Very well. Mr. Bose stated in your presence that it is your request that you represent yourself. I need to hear that from you, however. Mr. Bose has gone over explicitly with me regarding being represented by an attorney, being represented on behalf of myself as pro se, and I went over the curum, serum, I don't, curcum? Went over the circum? <clears throat> well, let's look that up. A prefix with the meaning roundabout, around, let's see if there's a legal definition. Oh, there's a circum legal definition here. What do you know? Wow, how did that get to circle? Redirected from circum. Oh, well, that's strange. There we go. Oh, that circumstance. Well, I don't know. Let's get back to that Terran page. I don't know. The whole circum. So I think she's, she went over the whole encapsulation of it. If you draw a circle around it, uh, around this situation, she says she went all, over all of it, which was representing and presenting as self pro per. It is my choice here today to go forward as self pro per. Do you have an understanding that you have the right to appointed counsel if you are unable to retain counsel? I'm aware that based on the notice, which was a, it was a complimentary repeat notice from four and a half years ago, that this entire case, the entire representation in this court, that there is no authority for this particular action, nor the underlying action from Tennessee. As far as the identification, I am here to go ahead and move forward with that identification again with the restatement that there is no authority for these proceedings or the identification hearing. And the judge says, did Mr. Bose explain to you that all I can do during the course of this hearing is make a decision about whether you are the person named in the arrest warrant and the indictment? Again, Mr. Bose did explain the process, the limits and parameters that you had expressed to him as well into the court the last time we were on record. Again, I state that based on these perfected filings that have been provided to the court, there is no authority for this court or for you, ma'am, to proceed forward with any identification hearing inclusive of the underlying cause of action which resulted in us all being here. The court, whose decision is it for you to represent yourself? My decision to present and represent self is solely my decision. It is my sole authority and my sole determination. Has anyone forced you to make such a decision? 
I'm not sure where that question's coming from. There's no facts or data entered into any record that I would be forced to move forward as myself. As I stated, these filings here, if you had read them, you would clearly see that I am competent and conscious to make these decisions, these determinations, and that there is a solid proof of record of my competency to move forward and represent and present solely as self pro per. Uh, did Mr. Bose speak with you concerning the perils that an individual faces by electing to represent herself or himself? Ma'am, my full responsibility, accountability, and liability. I am completely aware of the perils of moving forward with a licensed attorney in such a matter. I am also aware of the ramifications and the consequences of all involved in this process when there is no authority to actually hold these hearings. I'm very conscious and aware of my own responsibility and accountability and liability for every word, thought, and action I take. Do you need more time to talk to Mr. Bose about your decision to represent yourself? I believe that Mr. Bose and I have thoroughly exhausted all conversation as to our ideologies, where they do not match and where we are different, that different applications of law are applicable in this matter. Again, or and again, again, the fact that there is documentation that's applied to the court, that there is no authority for them to even hold this hearing, let alone hold me in custody in detention to have this matter before the court, as is the Tennessee matter, the underlying one that Mr. Parker still has instigated and brought here before this DC court. So I'm very aware of this. I do not need any more time to be able to speak through the things. We're just repeating ourselves at this point. So I am very aware I'm conscious and competent to make any declaration and every decision that I am presenting and representing to you as myself. Mr. Bose referred in passing during his comments to issues having to do with literacy. May I ask you to please state for the record what your education level? State for the record your education level. I have a JD, a Juris Doctor, a law degree from Gonzaga School of Law. That's the highest level of degree. I also have a BA in Accounting and Finance, and my JD emphasis was in litigation, real estate, excuse me, estate planning and trials. Very well, thank you. Are there other inquiries that either of you propose in order for the court to make a determination consistent with Ferretta? Mr. Bose, no, Your Honor. Ms. Walters, no, Your Honor. Very well, thank you very much. Ms. Tucci Giraffe, thank you. You may be seated. The court finds based upon Ms. Tucci Giraffe's response to the court questions and her narrative statements that her waival of counsel is knowing and voluntary and otherwise conforms to the requirements of Ferretta. And accordingly, the court will note in the record or will include a finding in the record to that effect. The court will appoint you, Mr. Bose, to serve as standby counsel. Do you wish to be heard, Mr. Bose? May we approach the podium, Your Honor? I believe that now the court has found that Ms. Tucci is competent to represent herself. She would like to lodge an objection. Very well, I will hear your objection. Heather says, thank you, Your Honor. Again, as I restate, this court does not have the authority to even hold this identification hearing, let alone, I'd like to clarify and correct the record that I am not waiving any rights, that I am stating that there's no authority to even ask me to waive my rights, to waive any rights. As far as Mr. Bose being stand-in, I need no other assistance in presenting or representing as myself. Very well, thank you, you may have a seat. Thank you. Judge Deborah says, perhaps our record has changed. The finding that the court just articulated was that Ms. Tucci Giraffe waives counsel. Ms. Tucci Giraffe has now indicated that she does not waive any right, and that being the case, I believe we must proceed with you, Mr. Bose, as counsel and not standby counsel. Had there been an objection to your role, Mr. Bose, as standby counsel, the court, as I indicated at the outset reviewed during our recess, McCaskey v. Wiggins, 465 U.S. 168, and notes <clears throat> that at page 184, the Supreme Court held that 
A defendant's Sixth Amendment rights are not violated when a judge appoints standby counsel, even over the defendant's objection to relieve the judge of the need to explain and enforce basic rules of the courtroom protocol or to assist and or to assist the defendant in overcoming routine obstacles that stand in the way of the defendant's achievement of her own clearly indicated goals. So had there been an objection to your role as standby counsel, Mr. Bose, the court would have appointed you to serve in that capacity over objection based upon the authority set forth by the Supreme Court in the McCaskey opinion. However, having now heard that Ms. Tucci Giraffe does not waive any rights, we must proceed. Ms. Walters, you have just one witness, is that correct? <coughs> so what this judge has done is just run right over Heather. Heather is being clear and saying that, uh, let's be clear here, I'm not waiving any of my rights. You don't have the authority to even ask me to do that, but she wants to represent herself. She's being clear in all of this, and the court, Deborah, is choosing to hear what she wants to hear. Uh, and and this, is, this is pretty clear uh, from from the conversation that, uh, like just the way she just charging right ahead and saying, oh no, you said, you said these three words back up here and I'm gonna assign a meaning to that, that you're not waiving any of your rights and therefore you have to have Mr. Bose as your counsel and, and, uh, and therefore you're not representing yourself. This is pretty crazy. So, she immediately goes to the prosecution and they're going to start calling witnesses. That's correct, Your Honor. And just to clarify, the government will produce Jenks and exhibits for the identity hearing. Can you do that now, please? Just to be clear, I'm providing them to Mr. Bose. Thank you. And you may call your Mr. Bose. Your Honor, Ms. Tucci Giraffe tells me that she's not objecting objecting to the appointment of standby counsel. She's objecting to me as, she's not objecting to the appointment of standby counsel. She's objecting to me as standby counsel. Well, the court knows of nothing we can do at this point other than to proceed. Wow, the, the, she's being willfully ignorant is what this judge is, is appearing to do here. That is an imprecise way, perhaps, and I will endeavor to be more precise of stating our status. Like, like, wow, this, this judge appears to be under some form of behavior control right here. I don't know if this is out of fear or what's going on, but, uh, wow. The court understood the request made by Ms. Tucci Giraffe to be one to waive her right to counsel. And it was for that reason that during the recess, the court reviewed Ferretta and McCaskey and heard from Ms. Tucci on the record concerning the waiver. Ms. Tucci Giraffe has now stated that she does not waive any right. That being the case, I have no basis to relieve you of your appointment or to appoint you to serve as standby counsel since an appointment of standby counsel would be operative only if an individual were representing herself. Because the broader objection appears to be one to this court's determination to proceed with an identity hearing. I believe the record is clear with respect to why we are proceeding with identity hearing. That is what the federal rules of criminal procedure provide in a circumstance in which an individual is arrested in this district based upon a charge pending in another district. So the court has no alternative. To the extent that Ms. Tucci Giraffe's objection is also to her continued detention, I have no means to address that that either other than by continuing with the identity hearing. Indeed, it may be the case that the government is unable to carry its burden to prove that Miss Tucci Giraffe is the individual named. Ha! They're not trying to prove that she's an individual. This judge doesn't even get it. They're trying to prove that she's an entity. Remember, uh, remember the defense attorney's comments from, uh, from the first video? whether Miss Tucci Giraffe is the entity or individual named. So, so right here, this judge is, is cleverly with words already omitting certain information. 
in which case the court would have no al no alternative other than to release Miss Tucci Giraffe. But I cannot get to that point if we do not have the hearing, so we must proceed. Mr. Bose, Your Honor. The court also noted that at the time the request was made to continue the hearing from Monday until the day, the court expressed a concern regarding Miss Tucci Giraffe's continued detention and pointed out that Monday was the third day. We are now four days removed from that, and I know of no way to ensure that Miss Tucci Giraffe's rights are protected, that the court proceeds with the identity hearing in an orderly process, and that we comply with the applicable rules other than to begin. Your Honor, I understand that. The record will reflect that we are proceeding over Miss Tucci Giraffe's objection. Your Honor, I'd just like to have just 30 seconds so I can see whether or not she might want to withdraw that objection. It's my understanding that Ms. Tucci would like to represent herself in this matter. <clears throat> that is not what Ms. Tucci Giraffe said. I do not question at all your proffer with regard to the discussion that you had, but Ms. Tucci Giraffe had said that she didn't waive any rights at all, so we must proceed. Wow, like this judge has just grabbed a hold of a couple words that Heather was using to try to make clear to her that, hey, there's no authority for this hearing at all. There's no authority for you to even ask me to waive my rights. Huh. Well, but she may change her mind if she realized the consequences of that decision. That would raise another question concerning the extent to which the waiver represents an understanding of what we are doing here. And that word comes directly from Ferretta, so we must proceed. Well, that's the end of page 20. Uh, wow, I'm kind of getting worked up reading that. <laughs> I guess coming in at half an hour and, and we're going to stop for there. But yeah, uh, something's going on with this judge and something's going on with this court reporter. This is highly irregular. I've never seen anything like this before.